Welcome to the Black Dog LED Complete Grow Kit Grow Along. I'm Cliff. I'm Noah. I'm Kevin. I'm Amanda. Every Friday we'll be posting the progress on our YouTube channel and on our website. To see updates and post your comments, go to blackdogled.com forward slash grow along. In this particular grow along, we're going to be going over our two and a half by two and a half complete grow kit with Black Dog LED. During this full grow, we're going to be using everything inside the kit for the entire grow. This particular grow kit shows our Phytomex 2200. For this and any other information, go to our website, blackdogled.com. All right, so we're going to go over how you mix nutrients to uh, water your plants with. So uh, with your complete kit comes a bunch of very handy stuff for mixing nutrients, including this graduated five-gallon bucket, which shows you um, how much, how many gallons of water you've got filling it up, um, as well as various uh, measuring uh, devices such as this uh, syringe. We've got little pipettes. Uh, we've got graduated cylinders. And of course, uh, the kit comes with a Blue Lab combo meter, which we'll use to check the pH of our resulting nutrient. Also have this handy dandy mixing spoon, which will come in very useful as we mix everything up. Now I'm going to demonstrate today how we mix up Dynagrow. Uh, this may be one of the fertilizers you're using, but this uh, same methodology, uh, everything I'm going to show you today, really applies to any kind of nutrient that you're mixing up uh, as far as the steps that you want to do. So first, you're going to want to start off by figuring out roughly how much water you're actually going to need to water your plants with. If your plants are very small and they're in small pots, you probably don't need five gallons full worth of water to get your plants fully watered. Um, and you might be able to get away with one or two gallons to start. Once the plants get bigger and are in full flower and are in large pots, you're probably going to need five gallons or possibly even more of water to keep your plants happy. So you're going to need to adjust the amount of water that you use uh, throughout the growing cycle. General rule of thumb is if you're unsure how much to mix up, mix up a little bit more than you think you're going to need. You can always uh, dump that down the drain if not necessary. Um, and it's something that you'll get the hang of. Generally, the plants are not going to need less water over time, so you can always plan on them needing a little bit more uh, every time through uh, the growing cycle. Once they're done uh, stretching after about week three of flower, the plants don't actually grow any larger at that point, and they probably will need just the same amount of water um, every watering cycle from now on out. Anyhow, today I'm going to start off with five gallons of water. So I've measured out five gallons of water in this bucket. You can see that the uh, graduations on the side go up to three and a half gallons. This next plastic ring up there is roughly four gallons, and this uh, second one down from the top is five gallons. So I've got this filled up to this second line right here, just full of regular tap water. Now, we're using tap water here because we have a relatively clean water supply out of the tap. If your tap water happens to come from a well, you may actually want to invest in a filter to help remove some of the dissolved solids that are often in well water and can cause problems with your plants. If your uh, water out of the tap is relatively clean and low in dissolved solids, you can probably just get away with regular tap water. If in doubt, you can always uh, contact your local university or extension agent and they can help you out and uh, figure out how your water qualifies as far as whether you might need a filter or not. Generally, a local agricultural extension agent would be able to help you with that. So, for Dynagrow, uh, the Dynagrow uh, fertilizer is relatively simple. It's a two or three part depending on what uh, phase of growth you're at but we're going to demonstrate with vegetative nutrients today. So Dynagro comes with uh, Protect, which is a silica, and then we're going to use the Foliage Pro for uh, generic uh, fertilization for vegetative growth. We're also going to need something to adjust the pH with. Now, unless your water comes out of the tap extremely acidic, which almost never happens because acidic water would dissolve your pipes in the wall, you're generally going to need some sort of acid to help bring the pH of the final uh, fertilizer solution down to where it should be. So we've got some pH down uh, from general hydroponics here, which is mostly just phosphoric acid, same thing they put in Coca-Cola, um, and that will help drag the pH down. 
So to start off with, we're going to read the instructions for the fertilizer and figure out what we need to do. Now, generally, every fertilizer manufacturer is going to have instructions on the back of the bottle that tell you how much of each type. Sometimes they'll even give you a feeding nutrient schedule for how they want you to change what you're mixing over time uh, to tell you exactly uh, how much you need of each component over time. One thing to keep in mind, and this applies regardless of what kind of fertilizer you're using, you never want to mix the concentrated fertilizer together. So we would never want to mix these two directly together because it may actually cause a chemical reaction that causes crystals to form, salts to fall out, and then those nutrients aren't going to be available for your plant. There's a reason the fertilizer manufacturers sell so many separate parts, and it's not because they want you buying more plastic bottles because you simply can't mix those things in concentration. You have to mix them diluted in water in order for them to mix up properly. So you never want to contaminate your uh, fertilizer bottles with any of the contents of any of the other bottles. You want to make sure that when you're using a syringe or a pipette and you're dipping that in your fertilizer bottle, you want to make sure that this is clean. So it's handy to be near a sink and be able to rinse stuff off. I don't happen to have a sink right here, so I'm going to cheat, and we'll call this the drain, and I've got this just filled up with regular tap water so I can use that to rinse. So we've read the instructions on the back of our bottles here, and it tells us that we always want to use this particular one in conjunction with the complete nutrient formula, that's our foliage probe here and mix this one into the water first before putting in other fertilizers. And it says to use one quarter to one half teaspoon of this Protect per gallon of water. Now we've got five gallons of water here. We're gonna do the one quarter teaspoon per gallon. So one quarter teaspoon times five gallons of water, we end up with 1.25 teaspoons of uh, Protect that are gonna go in the five gallons of water. That's about six and a half milliliters one teaspoon is five milliliters, so 1.25 is about six and a half milliliters. So we're going to look and see where six and a half milliliters is on our uh, syringe here. And I'm actually going to get this out of the little bottle because it's easier. So we open this up and make sure the plunger is all the way down in our clean measuring cylinder here. And I'm going to pull up and get six and a half milliliters of this protect. We're going to then add that to our water here. And then I'm going to suck up a little bit of the water here. That's not really cleaning it, but that did an initial cleaning. So to really clean it, I'm going to take the fresh water and I could do this at the tap at the sink if I had one handy, but I'm rinsing this off inside and out and we just flush that down into the sink. Generally do it a couple times just to make sure everything is really clean. Now that we've added that, we want to stir it in. If we don't stir it in, it's possible that some of the nutrients just settle to the bottom, and then when you add the next thing, you're essentially mixing them in concentration. So every time you add a new component, you want to use your handy stir and give the water a good vigorous stirring for a few seconds, make sure it's well mixed up. All right, now that we have stirred that up, we can add our next component. And with Dynagro, uh, this is a very simple two-part nutrient solution. A lot of other fertilizer plant brands may have you mixing five, even ten different components together. Just want to follow the instructions on the back in terms of what order to do it in and how much of each part you want for uh, each gallon of water. So I'm going to take the foliage probe here. And this one, we want one teaspoon per gallon. One teaspoon is five milliliters. We've got five gallons, so we want 25 milliliters total. Now, this particular uh, measuring device only goes up to 10 milliliters. So if you want, this is why we include uh, things like the graduated cylinder here. This really only goes down to 25 milliliters here. So we could just fill up to this very bottom line, or I can just measure out 25 milliliters by filling this 10 milliliter one up. So there's 10 milliliters. And we'll do 20. Now 
another 10. So that's 20 milliliters. And then we'll get the last five here. There's the last five, so we've got 25 milliliters. I'm going to do an initial cleaning on that. It's always a good idea to put the caps back on your nutrient bottles as soon as you're done with them. If you start spreading caps out, you might mix the wrong cap to the wrong bottle, and that can cause problems. And so, again, I could be cleaning this out under the tap of the sink, but I don't have one hand. So, I'll rinse this guy out. And now we want to mix again vigorously. Until it's well mixed up. Now, with the Dynagrow, we're actually done with the two part nutrients there which is one of the things that makes Dynagrow very easy. It's a very simple fertilizer to use because it doesn't have a lot of parts. But we want to check and make sure that we have the proper pH. Now, pH controls how available nutrients are to the plant. Basically, plant roots are able to take up certain nutrients at certain uh, pH values. So pH is measuring whether something is acidic or alkaline. If it's too acidic or too alkaline, your plant is not going to be happy at all. And if you get it just at the right pH range, generally about 6.3 for uh, cannabis plants, then they're going to be able to absorb the most nutrients out of that. Some fertilizer manufacturers will have a suggested pH range that they will give you with their feeding schedules or specify on the back of the bottle. So if they give you a target pH, that's what you're going to want to use. We're just going to use a pH of 6.3 today as our target. So to measure that, we're going to take our blue lab combo here. here. Now you're going to want to make sure and keep this cap wet. I'm sorry, not the cap, the tip of this probe wet at all times because if it ever dries out, it actually won't uh, give you correct readings anymore. So that's why they give us this thing full of water to store it in. So we don't want to keep this out of water too long. We're going to put it in our nutrients that are well mixed up there and we're going to turn on our blue lab meter and we can see that it's measuring a pH of about 6.9. Now it's a good idea to keep the pH probe sitting in your nutrients for a few seconds because as you'll notice the pH has already dropped to 6.8. It does take it about a minute to get the final full reading of pH once you put the probe in. So we've got 6.8, we want to drop it to about 6.3. Now to do that, we're going to take some of our acid, which I happen to have some poured into a smaller bottle that's a little bit easier to deal with. Especially with things like acids and bases, you don't want to splash this stuff. If you get it on your skin, you want to wash it off as quickly as possible, and don't want to get it in your eyes at all. Um, you especially never, ever, ever want to mix uh, acid and base together directly. It'll cause a, a very vigorous chemical reaction can actually cause harmful fumes, it can start fires, it's a bad idea. So you always want to keep your acids and your bases very separate and it's always a good idea to add your acid to water rather than water to acid. So you never want to put a little bit of acid in the bottom of your bucket and then add water to it. So I'm going to put this down. I don't want to hold it while it's open. You just want to take every precaution you can to um, minimize the possibility of spilling. And on our Blue Lab Combo Meter, the pH is now reading 6.7, 6.6. It's varying a little bit. But we're going to only need just a little bit of acid here. So rather than using this big uh, plunger type measuring device, we're just going to use this little pipette which goes up to five milliliters and it generally doesn't take very much of this stuff so I'm gonna start off with half of a milliliter just up to there of acid and we suck up just half a milliliter as you can see there and we're gonna add it just a couple drops at a time again we want to be sure not to splash and I'm not even going to add the whole thing. I'm going to add about a quarter milliliter to start. And then I'm going to stir. And I'm going to be careful not to hit my pH probe in there while I'm stirring. But because you're adding literally just drops of this, you want to make sure it's well stirred. And again, 
again, give the pH probe 30 seconds, 45 seconds to uh, catch up. And I can see looking at the uh, pH meter that the pH is still reading 6.6. .6, so I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this half milliliter. And we'll just keep stirring. And according to the pH meter, we're now at about 6.5. So I'm going to get another half milliliter. But one thing when you're adjusting the pH, you want to make sure that you don't overshoot it. If I just grab five milliliters of acid and threw it in here, it would drop the pH way too low, which means then you'd have to use something else to adjust it up. And you just start fighting yourself, adding a whole bunch of stuff to your water that you really don't want to have to do. It's always best to be very cautious and careful when adding acids or bases to adjust the pH. Um, so that you don't overshoot and you get it right the first time. I'm going to grab another half milliliter of this acid and I'm going to drop that in while stirring. And you can see that that dropped the pH down to about 6.3 which is our target. Now just because the pH meter says 6.3 doesn't mean I'm going to stop and wrap up here. I'm going to keep stirring for just a few more seconds and we're going to leave the pH meter in there just to make sure that it is actually staying at pH 6.3, which it does appear to be doing. And that means that this water is now mixed up with fertilizer. It is properly pH adjusted. And again, we want to make sure and clean our instruments off that we used for measuring this. So I'm going to just flush it out in the bucket here and then we're going to suck up some clean water and throw that down the sink and again we want to cap up everything especially our acids and bases so we can't spill them and the pH meter is reading 6.3 still so it's just perfect you saw it went at 6.2 there very briefly but then it adjusted itself back up to 6.3 the pH meter will sometimes waver and it'll display 6.2 and then 6.3 and then 6.2 that's close enough what we want to try and do is get it right around 6.3 so with our pH probe because of the design of this sometimes a little air bubble can get trapped in there it's uncommon but it can happen and that will affect the reading it gives you so when you are putting your pH probe in it's a good idea to kind of swish it around in the water a little bit and make sure that all of the air bubbles are gone from the tip of the probe but now that we're done with this we want to do our normal storage procedure for it which is very carefully get as much of the nutrient solution off of it as possible we're going to want to take it to our sink we're going to want to rinse it off with fresh water. Make sure you get all the nutrients that we can off of there. And then we are going to want to put the cap back on with its fresh water in there. If you need to fill this up, they recommend filling it up just plain from the tap. You don't want to use distilled water. Certainly don't want to use nutrient water. You want to just use regular tap water. You fill it up to the fill line. And then we very carefully insert our probe through the top. And you can see that that is now completely filled up with water. We're going to tighten the cap down so that when we turn it upside down, no water is leaking. And this guy is good to uh, store until the next time we need to use it. Now we've got five gallons of mixed up nutrient uh, water that is properly pH adjusted to 6.3. Only other challenge is how to distribute it to the plants. Now, I've done plenty of years of trying to get stuff out of five gallon pockets and onto the plants and it can be a little bit tricky. That's why we include these specific watering cans with your complete kit. This watering can happens to fit beautifully in the five gallon bucket so that you can simply put it in. I generally hold it by the pour spout. You wanna slowly slide it in there and water will go right into the watering can. And then you can turn the watering can in the bucket, pull it back out, and we've got one gallon of nutrient water ready to go. When the bucket finally gets down to the point where you can't um, suck up the water in the uh, watering can directly by putting it in the bucket, then it's generally light enough that you can pick it up and pour it into your watering can. 
So now we've got our fertilizer mixed up, it's pH adjusted, and we're going to go water our plants. Alright, so it's day 11, we're here, we're going to check out what's going on inside the tent. So as you can see, all four of the seeds uh, germinated. And what I want to show you today is the cotyledons versus the true leaves. So these first two leaves that came up right here and right here are the um, inside of the leaf, I'm oh, sorry, inside of the seed that comes up and that is the first leaf that comes up. But the first true leaves are the ones that actually um, come up and look like cannabis, this set and this set. So we'll put that guy back underneath our awesome spectrum. As you can see, they're all up, super happy, super green. This is the LSD 25, and then these three are the Girl Scout cookie. So anytime you come in your grow, you're going to want to make sure that your plants are nice and heavy. They don't need to be watered. Make sure that all your fans are going, everything's going correctly. Catching any problems right when they start to occur is definitely the best way to do it. If you think that there's anything going haywire or you're not sure about it, ask questions always call us for support. It's a lot better to ask questions when you start to see problems instead of thinking that they'll self-correct because most likely it'll be a little bit too late by the time you get in there and start doing some real work. All right, everything in there is nice and happy, so we're just gonna close this up and check on it in another day or two. All right, so now that our plants are all good to go, we're just gonna do a quick one over in the tent, make sure everything's on and running. It's all good, it's all good. Hey guys, Amanda here. So it's day 12. We're going to go ahead and check the plants and see how they're doing. Let's take a look. Hey guys, Amanda here. So we're showing off our auto flowers in our two and a half by two and a half complete grow kit. And this is a perfect example of when plants need to be watered. Um, the, the pot feels nice and light. The soil is, has a nice dry texture to it, and the plants are not wilting or anything, so they are ready to go. So I'm going to mix up some newts, and then we'll be back to water. All right, so we're back, and it's time to water. We have our one-gallon bucket, and I have the Dynagro nutrients in there. And when you're watering, you just want to go around the perimeter of the plant. Try not to get any nutrients on the leaves themselves. And uh, you always want about 10 to 15% runoff. So this one gallon should do these uh, four plants very well. the leaves you can just lightly tap it off, rub it off, rub it off, however you'd like. I'll give it another minute and then I'll go around hit it again, suck out all that water and then we can close it back up. All right we're gonna go around a second time and just make sure everything gets nice and watered. So our plants are all nice and heavily watered. Our saucer no longer has any water in it. We vacuumed all that out. We're gonna do another once over in the tent just to make sure everything's on working correctly. Temperatures are right, humidities are correct. And then we'll zip it up. All right, so our plants are nice and heavily watered. The saucer's all cleaned out. We're gonna do a once over in the tent again to make sure all the fans are on, the humidity and temperature is correct. And then we'll go ahead and zip it up. Um, the most important thing about watering plants is not to overwater. That's the number one cause of plant death is overwatering plants. 
So we want to make sure that they're nice and thirsty, but not drought stressed before we water them each time. Oh, here to check on our autoflower grow again, so let's see how things are going. Seedlings are growing well. And it's difficult to see with the light on. <clears throat> but these three are uh, very light and need water. These three plants. And this guy is a little bit heavier. You can see the soil's just a little bit darker brown. Doesn't need water as much. But we'll go ahead and water these guys. A little bit of water each. And there we go. Turn the light back on. Ready to go for another day. Thanks for watching Black Dog LED's complete Grow Kid Grow Along. Be sure to watch next week for the update. To learn more about these kids, go to our website, blackdogled.com. Have a great week and good, good luck, luck with, with your, your grow. grow.